very elegant hallway. Oh, look at up there. Very, very, very regal. Impressive. This museum is free, which is so nice. I think they're having, um, I don't know if it's a special kind of like Egyptian or, but we'll see what's here. Oh, this is um, Assyrian. Yeah, I like the way they're lighting it. That's so important. Sometimes museums, it's not, it doesn't show all the, wow, look at that. That looks good. Yeah. It's actually quite dark in this room. I mean, over here, it's very, very dark. So certain things are lit well, and other things aren't lit at all. But it's it's nice that you can get really close to the stuff. That's like a little miniature kitty, I guess, toy. I don't think that's a mummy, but it's maybe that's what they put cats in. Who knows? All the little sculptures. Is that like a dolphin or an alligator? Frog, hippopotamus. Limestone canopic jars. I'm probably saying everything wrong. It's hard to focus because it's so dark in here. So I'll just do a little bit because, you know, it's always best to see this stuff in person. I do like seeing the little sculptures though. Learning more about Klimt remind you know is is impressing me how inspired he was by Egypt. So every time I look at some of these things, I'm I'm like starting to see more and more like what Klimt was using. These sculptures are so modern and soft. Very prominent ears. Arian or Ili, I don't know how to say it, a Greek style helmet. 600 BC. Sorry, so many reflections. I guess this whole video is really just um, to give you a taste so that maybe you'll want to come if you like antiquities and history.
there's a lot of here, pottery and figurines. But I've always been really attracted to the medieval stuff. Look at, I bet you this was made as maybe like one of those to show a design before the larger version. You know, for making, I guess, you know, knight armor. Wow, look at this. Yeah, a lot of glare. I like that plate. I think they have paintings here, so we'll go see. I do like I do like medieval armor. That is impressive. North Italian, 1545. Helmet from the late 19th century. Well, that doesn't. What? That seems too modern. Oh. We found the paintings. And I thought this one was nice. Of course, it's always hard to see, you know, on a video. But um, this is by... I don't know. Jean de Him. Definitely, you know, Dutch. And this one's pretty too. Very interesting. Like, I'm so interested in working on black paper now. So, this is kind of like. Ooh, there's like a little bee in there. I'm kind of inspired by that, that sort of um, initial contrast. Oh, and there's a little grasshopper at the bottom. We'll see if there's some paintings to show you. Oh, that's kind of sweet. the type of stuff that they would paint, just little vegetables or fruit. So interesting, that whole thing about just completely black backgrounds. I don't know how to say this person's name. It was in the 1600s. I do like that still life on top. I think this was done by the same person that did that really big one. Very, very old-fashioned, but beautiful. And you have to lift these um, curtains up to see, like, drawings and stuff. Lots of beautiful flower still lifes. I hate to say it, but... I mean, they're so, they are beautiful, and there's so many of them that they tend to just start to look decorative, and you gloss over them. I mean, that's the sad thing, when, when art starts to look too similar. Interesting lighting, the way that they have the ceiling lights coming in. The walls are very beautiful. They are covered with a fabric, so all the walls are fabric covered. It's not paint. As I get older, I've become much more interested in um, religious 
paintings like this because I've been um, just appreciating design. It's hard to see. Lighting is always difficult in the museum. So you can't really see it up close. You kind of have to get far away. But just the design elements and I guess using gold and paint and the flatness of it. I don't think I appreciated it that much when I was younger. But as I get older, I see, you know, tastes change. That's a beautiful frame. I still remember those gorgeous paintings in that medieval museum in Avignon. I just was, I was very struck by that. That is one wrinkly baby. I'm gonna send that to Teresa. She loves pictures of ugly babies. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're laughing about that. Oh yeah, she likes ugly babies. Oh look at this. This is must be the Trojan horse or something. Yep, the siege of Troy. Well, that must be like a sculpture. Yeah, the. the yeah, I think so. I don't know. It says the siege of Troy. Look at this frame. See, I, I mean that is beautiful. I like the paintings on the interior edge. Very interesting. I don't think I've seen that before. It's always fun to see a new take on it. I think some of the museum is closed because they're installing um, an exhibit. And this is different. What a contrast. <laughs> I think they skipped over, you know, realism. That's how a lot of museums are. They skip over. They go from extreme ancient to extreme modern. Oh, this is George Surratt. That's a sweet little... This looks like it's about a seven or eight by eleven this is like almost how it starts so. yeah this looks like a block in or some kind well, of study for that big study, one yeah, that is at the uh chicago yeah. art institute yeah. that yeah. park uh, what's it called Warkland park or something yeah this is study for yeah study interesting because you know how it's like a pointillism kind of but you can see it's like just lots of little soft brush strokes Okay, here's some. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Perking up, perking up. This is uh, Claude Monet. This is Henri Fatin Latour. It's a little dark, it's hard to see in reflection because it's behind glass. Um, William, William Hunt up there. Uh, 
Millet's, John Everett Millet. It's kind of nice, actually. I wish it were hung a little bit lower. A sergeant. Very high, unfortunately, and this is a John Edward Millet. Of course, that hair looks so much redder because of the blue background. I have to go all the way back here to not get glare. It's just hung too high, unfortunately. Very, very strong outline on the profile. Uh, there's not a soft edge on there. Very distinctive, which is, allows you to keep the face so high key, so clean. Hardly anything going on in that background. It's just so flat, but very hard to make. We're walking back to our little house and we saw this sweet church. The roses are in full bloom here in August. And I think they have a little cafe. This is the Kathy Anderson Church. Kathy Anderson Church. Yeah, let's make it big. Probably in, in the inside, a lot of times they modernize. Okay, pull. <laughs> oh, I like those figures up there. It's always fun to see how churches do things differently. Cute, cute little church. Oh, right. See, that's a small baptistry, right? They just have a little lid on it. Oh, a little lid, yep. So, yeah, I mean, this stuff looks like it's from like the 60s or 70s. I just also like how much everything is open and free. I think they do have a cafe behind, so maybe we'll go look for it. But this would be a fun place to just meet a friend and have a little chat. Honestly, use it for your own living room. Behind the church is just a public area for people to just bring their own little picnic. They just don't want you to bring uh, dogs or alcohol. Isn't that nice? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I thought it was a cafe. But it's just nice that they keep it open for people. Oh my gosh. Isn't that, this is the way it is, right? So remember when one of the first days they took us to the Eagle? that really charming pub so when you come to something from a different angle you just you don't even realize that that's where you're coming from and where's scott oh he's doing so oh he's taking pictures of flowers isn't that cute we've been walking and walking and we went and bought like pastries and fruit in a open air market and we got to jesus park and we just lie down <laughs> because we're tired. And um, yeah, no, it's very pretty here. It's really gotten nice, but I need a rest before we get all the way back.
<laughs> You're filming me and I'm filming you. Yep. <laughs> this is what Sue needs to plug in her laptop. This I'm about to do today. my a Zoom class tonight and we have to go over to Rachel's because the internet isn't good enough here. So the different adapters, one into that, into that, and that goes into the wall. <laughs> isn't that funny? The things that you do when you travel and you have to, we're so glad we brought them. I'm going to tape this together so you don't Yeah, make sure it. that when you guys do stuff, have to have the... it's so easy to leave an adapter in the wall. We've done that multiple times. So if you like tape it all together, that way you know when you have to leave, the adapter goes with you. Scott is helping Rachel with her computer, and I want to show you some of her beautiful work. She's all these lovely drawings. You can follow her. It's one of her paintings right there. Look at her amazing skies. I mean, yeah, these are always so, so lovely. And this is one that she did in Wales. <laughs> I love it. I want to, I'm getting my shadow. <laughs> like, wow. She made this cool little studio. A little still life box and her view. She's made it so nice in a small space. Putting her still life there. She has another box up there. Look at these beautiful still lives. I shall open yours. Oh. Don't want to get glare. No one nearby to share with. Huh? It's not showing up on my phone either. Look at these lovely paintings. They're doing computer stuff. I just thought I'd show you an artist in London. Oh, actually, Cambridge. That's another little um, self-portrait. I'm sure I will. I have it's another little self-portrait. She's really good at self-portraits. And these, she has these wonderful prints. You can get these prints from her. Aren't these amazing? So cool. Perfect. Our little outdoor area. It is so charming. We're in Ely, uh, about a half hour from Cambridge, and this is where Thomas Cromwell lived. And they think they've turned his house into like a kind of a information tourist center. This is kind of funny. At least you can't, at least you know where you're at. All over Cromwell's house. The information center. I know. All right, we're gonna go in. Oh, we are? Yeah. Okay. I think Not much to see in the house, unfortunately, just a tourist information. And it's kind of overcast. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, at least it's cool. We're not like boiling. It's only about a half hour, I think, outside of Cambridge. The cathedral, it was just about half a block from the visitor center. I'm assuming somebody lives here, but this is um, right kind of on the entrance to the cathedral. The chantry or chantry, very, very pretty. 
That's a little drizzly. As long as we don't get completely rained on, I'm fine. Funny, it depends on when you hit it, but this is pretty good. This is like yeah. the ex epitome of these flowers. What an English garden. Yeah. What a charming home. Could you imagine like they live here and every day they just have annoying people like me <laughs> looking in their garden, looking in their windows. Welcome to Ely. Yeah, it looks very, very, very primitive. So there's a lot of scaffolding, but I think we're going to be able to see some evening, um, they do an evening song at 5.30 every day. So it's lucky we came in the end of the day. This beautiful ironwork on this door. Oh, stained glass museum that way. I'll have to go see that. Oh, you know, when they do that sort of ultra kind of contemporary, probably from the 60s. Yeah, this stained glass is so much more colorful than the kind that was in Cambridge. That one was much more etched and um, kind of grays and browns. And this is... just looked up at the ceiling. I haven't seen, I love going into the cathedrals and seeing new designs. It's like, you know, it's so dizzying to look up the whole time. Everything is um, this way. So I'm supposed to stand facing the door. All the paintings are facing this way. That's really nice. It seems morbid to see that, but it's beautifully done. I have no idea who that is. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, a bishop. Bishop from the 1800s. They must have like concerts and things because there's so many chairs on the side. A lot of space. This does hurt your neck, looking up so much. Kind of, in a way, a little creepy, but maybe it's just because of the movies we've seen. You know, this is what you see people who are killing children wear. Ooh, bright light. It's 
actually nice to have the camera a little bit because it's almost too hard to like look at the stained glass for long periods of time. And you can zoom in with your camera easier. Very, I love seeing like the floors and cathedrals. Bishop West Chantry Chapel from the 1500s. Oh my gosh, look at that floor. That is cool. That reminds me of some of the things that I want to do on black paper. Doing like gold and white prints. Wow. That is really pretty. Look at this wall. It's like miniature little um, designs up here. So if you think about it, I mean, people were not allowed in here. Such a treat to be able to come in now. Could you imagine, like, like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, there's no way that people would have been allowed in here. I do love these floors. That's really cool. Wow, that is really beautiful. Blue. I wonder if like blue is very fashionable in the stained glass, I mean. Thought for the week. Every act, every deed of justice and mercy and benev benevolence makes music in heaven. That's nice. Wow. That is cool. like a medieval armor. I even I hate walking on it. I feel bad. There's Scott. The floor is really cool. There's a couple there's a couple two small rooms that are just in time they're gonna be shutting this end of the building quite the music. Oh great. We're gonna get to hear the music. Hey. This is a special place. Oh, special place? The bath, oh, in there? <laughs> The Lady Chapel. The Lady Chapel is dedicated to Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin. Mary, Mother of Jesus. Its foundations were laid in 1321 and it was completed in 1349. I mean, 
it's oh it's cool and yet it's also segregated so many emotions look at all the heads a lot of the heads were taken off on these statues these little people yeah fascinating you wonder if it's just erosion it's like when you go to india and you see all those little figurines on the side of buildings but I wonder if they're just like soft um, you know, they just kind of eroded over time. They closed off this um, center part before I could get in, but I also got to see those two small rooms in time. It's interesting to see how the medieval parts were built over by, you know, layers and layers of stone and obviously parts of the church, you know, there used to be archways right there. Oh my God, look at the sky. That's cool. That looks... This is the outside of the female, the women's chapel. should buy that house there looking over this oh we can watch all the parades and all the royalty comes here look at the clouds doesn't it look kind of Maybe, miracle yeah. especially in the video it so looks bright, like uh, yeah. the yeah. light is shining yeah. through that's archway clouds that's right so Harry did some work on this. He's a stone sculptor. So he did something he's showing us. Harry did this little gargoyle up there on the right. And his teacher did the one on the left. And he was showing us um, the story behind those little... He calls them nobodies. He says... They're gargoyles, but like, they're actually called nobodies, which is interesting. We just had dinner at a Thai restaurant and uh, it got a little bit brighter out. Just wanted to show you what things look like with the littlest bit of light. We just got back and Scott is touching up the painting a little bit. And the um, sunsets turn into a beautiful day. I'm glad we got to see that cathedral and that town. Looking at James's work, it's always fun to paint with other people and go see what they're doing and get inspired by them. We're visiting James, the artist that Scott painted in the park, and this is just like a little alleyway in the back of his house. Look at this cute little sink. Oh, is this how you keep your um, paints fresh in the water? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh Overnight. Um, this is fun. It's interesting seeing it in the light. Because it's quite shady in that corner, isn't it? These are artist studios. How fun. Oh, I love the colors in that one. It's not dark, is it? Yeah, that's great. It's funny because, you know, the ambient light is everything. You know, whether it makes it look like dark or whatever, you, you move from one bit to another, so... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I love your colors. 
So this is what I did. This is really beautiful yeah, how he did the stuff like behind a glass. This one here, it's all yeah. soft and blurred to make it understood that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh yeah, I can do some. So this is your garden yeah. behind. Oh, so he's painting that. It's like a night scene. Oh, look at all that music. Oh, autobiography of a yogi. This is what he did today. Yeah, it had really lovely posts. I really, really love this pink right here. Oh, look at that little. Look at those bridge scenes. Yeah, this is. Uh, I was just saying that's. I mean, I'm oh, working on these still this lights. Is so cool. In the evening. Oh. And that is just the other day. Up, a, I mean, that's work in progress. So tell me, oops, tell me what this is. They're tents. Oh. Like uh, what we call bell tents. Okay. Bit, bit like teepee, but, yeah, yeah. but they're yeah. canvas. Oh. Um, and that's a sports week. Yeah. That's, I love them. Uh, I love the. I love they. They look like there's a lot of air because of the. From my studio, doesn't it? That, one that is. Too. Yeah, I recognise her. Yeah. And my, that's, that's my bench. Oh, you did, did you do two on the day or did you? No, one? I did one and I thought I might ah. just try and work it up. But I, I, again, it, it's work in progress. Uh-huh. So um, uh, I might just try and do a bit more. Uh-huh. Oh, look at this whole wall. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this inside your house, that figure? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That is a pose. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bauhaus. Oh, wow. Do you, do you know Bauhaus? No. Oh, Bauhaus? No, I don't. No, he was a French painter. And he, I, I mean, I think some people don't like him because his subject matter was a bit dodgy. Oh. But no, I just liked the, the, yeah. the dynamic. Putting figures inside, yeah, interiors. Yeah, and, and lighting, you know. Oh, my God. Oh, look at all those frames. Yeah. What a charming studio. You just worked every inch. It's well, all? Every, every inch. Yes. Yeah. Look at this. A sweet little... Like watercolor. Yeah, I love the fact that it's on a to- color paper. So it's kind of like a gouache, right? So you can just do a little bit of white yeah, and let the paper. Uh, oh, I love that. That's little secretary. I mean, these were on. I did quite well out the RBA this year. I sold two. Oh, congratulations. Uh, which is good. Um, is this Venice? That's Venice, yeah. yeah. Nice, beautiful. Um, and that was one of the lockdown pictures. Oh, yeah, still Oh, your little self, is that a self portrait? Yeah, yeah, it's me in the mirror. Oh, yeah. oh I love how you did the pottery. Oh my gosh. Very nice. And then, um, oh, th- this one might be laugh. Yeah, I love it. That's cool. Yeah, you look very dapper. This on the other side is fun too. This is something I've been working on. Funny we were talking about acrylics. Uh, Mm -hmm. I lied a a (laughs) bit. Oh, you have it. That that is acrylic. Right, right, right. Um, But I'm struggling with it. I'm going to do it again on... Oh, there's something to look at in every inch of this studio. I love it. Look at these type of hats. Probably wearing them to like openings and... Daggers from trips and they have this sweet little. Oh, that's charming. Very English. Very very English. They are gardeners here. You can add just a little squirt of, I think they call it extender, and it will keep it from drying. It'll go, it'll, it can stay on. This is fun. Tiny little um, stools. Everything has to be small. I just recently tried oh, and the skylights. Because when I do like he has such a distinct color, color palette, you know, high key, and which I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like this yeah. door. Like anyway, so I'd show you his studio. Yeah. So if you put a thing that's called it's a, a very a, unusual uh, easel, like a gloss, you said gel medium, okay. and it keeps it glossy. Keep so glass. when you paint it and it dries, it's the same color than when when you're putting it on. It makes it easier to try and match a color. Yeah. Uh, because that the fact that when it dries, it's it's uh, it that becomes means, lighter. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's something. To I try mean, I, too. I've only, as I say, I mean that is literally the only acrylic. I've only done a few, like when I went on trips. I've forgotten that. Tell yours. 
No, it's not. I love that. Isn't, Isn't it that? beautiful? It's so, a man called Alan Gwynne Jones. Oh, I love it. He was one of the most. Um, he was a friend of Percy. Right? Very long time. I met him when I was very young. But he died long, long time ago. But what a, And that what leads a, out to the alley. Man. It's just. Um, you don't get any better than that, I think. Is this Prague? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this one Prague or? It is. Yeah, yeah well done. Right. Yeah. I made it on that bridge too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's an amazing bridge. Those black it's beautiful, sculptures. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Isn't that? Yeah. Wow. So we're kind of walking in between the tiny little streets, going to Trinity Hall. And this is one of the oldest, I guess, wealthiest colleges. And we're gonna see what he shows us, which will be so, oh, founded 1350. Medieval stuff was really ugly and they just hid it. Um, but there's a couple of little details, you'll see the sort of medieval bit. Um, and so basically the, the way it works in the UK at a collegiate university, and there aren't very many, there's, there's Oxford and there's Cambridge, there's a couple of others, is that um, the students are all based in one of the colleges. So some of the windows that you see here, they're kind of offices and stuff, but some of them are also student rooms. When they were doing res uh, restoration in the 1970s, they, under they uncovered that medieval window because this college doesn't look very medieval, right? But it is from, you know, the 1300s. I don't think so. I think it was just covered up. And when they, when they took away some of the um, stone facing, some of the stone facing, they found the window in the other oh, side. Of the lovely. But there are some photos in the archives when they were doing that. Oh, it's a tiny little closet. Yeah, it's just used as a sort of storage space. Wow. Uh, I'm just going to check the stone one second. Yeah, do. It's clunch. Yes, yeah, that yes. must have been the yeah. same as, as the yeah. 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 local stone. Yeah, exactly. This exactly. is the smallest um, chapel of all the colleges in Cambridge. Some of that was filmed from there, and you get a much better view of the scene on the top. Yeah. 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 It's very masculine with all the wood. Very beautiful. I love these sort of um, metal candlesticks. And you see everywhere the little thing, everyone thinks it's a little half moon. Um, I wonder what that device is. It, it's neck armor. It's neck armor. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a breast yeah, yeah, it's just you, you'd wear around the neck to the part of it. It's a suit of armor. Okay. And that's probably why they kept it because it was probably deemed an important yeah. function. I've not seen that before. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, very cool. And, and you see when they've done this, they've obviously designed this so that it's oh, yeah, 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 really yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It's a pretty big painting for a pretty tiny chapel. It's been changed since the beginning of the 18th century, but some of this may have been, you know, re-known since then. And the other piece of the cabinet is from Mansoori and the King Senators, who is not someone I know about. This is the newest building in the college. It's a music gallery. This was the chapel we were just in. And they explained to me that all the colleges are really kind of like hotels and that they all have their classes in the university, but the different colleges like Trinity or all John and all the different Magdalene, they're all just kind of like dorms or hotels. Interesting, I did not know anything about that. Yeah. Oh, no. It gets a bit it does come all the way down and then it goes all the way back. Now, it doesn't pass round, right? So it doesn't do the normal port thing. No. Okay. okay. So what would be your theory? What, what do you think? And with this, because like, it looks like a croupier kind of thing, but it's not that. What's your theory? I think this whole section moves round and you can push that wood round. It's like a lazy suit. Can you do that? It's like a mixture of old and new. Do the students then move round? Do they swap places? The faces of these paintings are nice, but they're facing windows. 
They have oh, gloss varnish right. in the dark. These are going to be wearing a silk, right? That will stay, yeah. Yeah, will stay a lot. So it's almost, you know, it's hard to video. It's almost not worth it. But it's fun to see behind, behind the doors. Some of these characters, all the people that were probably deans and presidents. This tiny little cafeteria, it really is cute. So charming. This is lovely. Oh, and I love this like very warm Sienna stone. This is the building we just walked out of. I know the most beautiful gardens are for fellows. This little magical garden in here. Yeah. It seems like they're doing lots of renovation. I don't know. School probably starts in a couple weeks. Trying to get as much done. Oh, look at this magical seating area. Oh, wow. What a charming little place. Oh. I do love the color of that like mustard yeah, yellow mustard honey. Ye I know I was gonna ask him what kind of stuff. I really like that. I know. So this is obviously new building next to very old building. Oh, that is nice. I, I just think this is so cool. This is probably my favorite portrait. So, so no. study the slate. Oh, I just David Paul. Yeah, I just think it's really cool. He just totally knows what he's doing. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, eighty-eight. Very confident. Yeah. It has a feeling of Everett Raymond Kinsler, but then also mm -hmm. like Mosby or how Richard used to paint in the sixties. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really good. Yeah. yeah. Fresh, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I know, look at those beautiful hands. Yeah, yeah it's very Alpine one way. Yeah, yeah, very, very. Yeah. Oh, this guy looks serious. Hard to see. Yeah, it's very similar Just a mm -hmm. meeting room with more paintings that are hard to see. Interesting way, this is the lighting system. See? This is the lighting and how they, you can see the old beams. Mm. That's not that great. <laughs> this college is right up against the river. It's that different. Bellamy? It's Bellamy, isn't it? Oh, this is another. Yes, it is, yeah. They put all their paintings in their eating halls. Oh, that's a definitely interesting awesome. contemporary. He's a big name in the late 70s, 30s, I think. Yeah. 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 This is Benjamin Sullivan.
and about a year ago, I was, I was um, showing around the group. Oh my gosh, so you even have baby, baby chairs. That's interesting. And that's the door outside that we first came in. It's a beautiful room. something Ruskin College. It's the one that does the fine art and illustration. And so this is an, um, a Tuesday night group. And you see how the light is right here in the middle. So that's going to be pretty nice. I mean, Scott and I are just, you know, using chairs and having the front chair be where we lean our boards. Um, yeah, no, this is, this is the building. She says that there's no fine art in the actual, you know, Cambridge University that we were just at. And this one can get pretty crowded. So... I don't know what's down there. I think we just came from this direction. It does look like a huge, huge school. This is the Cambridge School of Art Drawing Studio. And we're gonna sit right here. I got myself in a corner. And I'm um, just gonna sit I'm actually next to this fabric. And it might be dark, but whatever. I wanted to show you how they do the lights it's on that track. And instead of having like a wall on, right, because they need to be more in the middle, they do it on these um, more metal, probably meant for track lights in other situations. Really, really crowded night. Our, the great model that we had the other night at the King's College. So this is fun. There's one of Scott's drawings. I was completely in the dark. Um, they didn't have the lights on at all while we were drawing. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I'll show you guys later. It's, it's too weird to like flip through my drawings and videotape them. So I'll do it later. <laughs> We're getting picked up in a few hours by a car to drive us to our London place. And I'll show you the quick sketches I did last night. Um, I was completely in the dark for the first maybe four, but I didn't really know what to do because she didn't have any light on her. So this is the very first one. I think it was a five minute. This was another five minute. So I was trying to figure out what to do. And I realized, of course, you know, even though you try so hard to pack well, I completely forgot my super dark red. So I wasn't able to go into the figure and use dark reds. So I was trying not to put darks in there. If I had to put a black, I would always make sure I put a warm on top of it. But yeah, I mean, these, these poses are so abstract and I it was pretty much all shadow. So it really was different. I, you know, it was an interesting mind thing, right? To, okay, go, well, why have lighting always the exact same? You know, my studio, the way I set it up, it's always uh, such strong light and dark pattern. But when it's a little bit awkward and you feel uncomfortable, then who knows what's gonna happen, right? So that was the very last one. So it was only two hours. So they only do two hour um, sessions here. Which is actually kind of nice because um, things are a mess. We're packing up because, oh, I wanted to show you the painting that um, Harry did. I really like it. I mean, it, it's so graphic and that's Rachel. I mean, I love it. She always stands very, very, you know, kind of like straight backed and straight armed. And I love how gestural, he didn't really go in there and make hard edges for her. Yeah, no, there's something quite wonderful about his paintings. He's kind of a natural. And Scott did three landscapes, and then he's gonna give the portrait, and that's a painting that Scott did of Rachel from a trip to Croatia we did, so we're gonna give her that. And, um, yeah, so. 
before we pack our pads up. Um, yep, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I like how you were doing those kind of designs, very klimty. And that is kind of cool, just like, because, you know, without doing those lines, it looked a little bit just almost too traditional, right? Well, and I put these in because when I did this one below, it, I had a lot more reds in it. Mm. And this was so dark. I put some of that just to make it a little redder and right. give it a little bit of airiness. Because if it. you do have two figures on one page and like, say you are mm. going to frame this, you kind of want them to um, balance each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're just using like new pastel or con conti, you know, like pastel sticks. So. Right. This is kind of funny. It almost like I don't know if it looks like a puddle or if it looks like a little fake, like uh, one of these type of rugs, like a little, yeah. <laughs> like that a bear a rug. Shadow she was casting because the light was coming from exactly above. And we were. She's such a great model. Um, what was her name? Uh, Eva. Eva. Uh, she's from Germany, but she's lived here forever. Such. I mean, she really. I think in a way, she she challenges herself to do very uncomfortable poses. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was home, I would never allow her to do that. But in, like I said, away from home, they do things. I mean, like, that's really nice. It is really nice. Um, because a lot of her poses do, I don't know if we're us thinking if it was like cellular memory, but like even like this one, because she was holding a cane, which was able to keep her, her hands out. But I mean, when you draw them, it's like they remind us of like handcuffs or being tortured and like like she tends to just pose with like her arms bound and looking down and stuff <laughs> yep so yeah she was holding. well actually it was like a big pole almost like a broom pole yeah this is a real quick one so. oh and that was from the other night yeah cool yeah really neat did you find drawing with that no light interesting or a challenge or with the light from directly above well both times we drew her we didn't really have strong yeah. light no it was interesting yeah it forces you to do things right yeah. like you wouldn't normally do you, you kind of have to squint and design your shadows mm -hmm. so i still try to look for light and dark you know even if it's just so subtle of a, a value change then i'll emphasize that and make it into right. a design uh, so that you'll have a little bit of form yeah yeah no yeah it that was fun it was fun all right yeah. scott's gonna go get ready Thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. I love it when people write me about them and I have fun doing them. So I'm so glad that people are enjoying them. Please subscribe and follow me and Scott on our Instagram pages, our website, and also on our patreon.com forward slash Susan Lyon.